We're all about the two carrots, one knife approach in our house. And let's face it, frugal living and sustainability are a match made in heaven. So we have got seven tips for you to save you money and do your bit for the planet. Now the last one, the seventh tip, is the most important. So hang around and wait for that one. With purse strings and belts pulled tighter than ever, it's no wonder that more and more people are embracing a frugal lifestyle. But as we said in the intro, we love ourselves a two carrots and one knife scenario. If you're going to make the effort to live more frugally, why not make it count twice? Once for your wallet and once for your planet. But wait, it gets better. We love saving money and we love making a difference. But we also love simple. And that's exactly what these tips are. Simple. Some of them require more of a time investment than others, but you can always pick and choose. You don't have to adopt all of them, all seven ideas, unless you want to be an eco-frugal overachiever. As always, we'll include links in the description below so you can learn more about the benefits of these practices. Gift giving is a, a lovely sentiment, but it can be very costly. Yeah, and the thing is that you often buy things that people don't really want, just so that you have something to give them. Yeah, and most of the time those things either end up gathering dust or um, in a landfill. And the truth is, most people don't need more stuff. Yeah, so the way we handle uh, gift giving is... More often than not, we make a donation to a, a cause or a charity that needs help. And, um, you know, hopefully you can make it something that, that is close to the recipient's heart. I mean, examples of what we've done in the past? Well, we, um, we adopted a donkey for our friend's little girl. We planted trees for your nephews. Um, every year in Thanksgiving, we always adopt a turkey for someone for Christmas. Yeah, so um, those, are, those are pretty cool. And, and a lot of the places send stuff that you can pass on. You know, like you get, um, you get a, for the tree, you get a, a location pin. Yeah. So my nephews could find their tree um, here in Africa. Um, and then uh, the turkey, you get an adoption certificate. Yeah, and the donkey as well. The donkey is so cool. You get, um, you get an email twice a year giving you an update on how your donkey is doing. Yeah. And so. if you ever come to South Africa, you could actually w you could visit your donkey. Yes. We, previously, we lived without a car for about eight years. And then we bought one just at the end of COVID, which we've had for two years now. We loved living without a car and we'll definitely go back to it as soon as we move back to the city and we've got access to other transportation modes. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's just such a bonus. You save so much money, you're healthier because you walk in more, um, it's better for the planet because you, you're using things like public transport. You're biking. You're biking or you just walk in. The other reason it's so great for your, your wallet is that um, there's no car maintenance to worry about, no car insurance to worry about. Yeah, another win-win. In our experience, buying fresh fruit and veg is cheaper and more sustainable than buying processed foods. Yeah, exactly. And if you choose to buy local and seasonal fresh produce, then you go in even a step further because then the, the produce will be cheaper and it's more sustainable because it's not imported from elsewhere in the world. We also compost our kitchen scraps and take a bucket with the composted material to the local community garden every week. I mean, obviously this reduces landfill, but it also creates a nutrient-rich soil, which they, they make there, um, sort of adding it into a circular economy cycle. Cycle, some of you know what I mean. So that's the bonus of eating fresh produce, because obviously you can't do anything with processed food. It comes in boxes that goes to the landfill. This, this is just a, a really cool, frugal and sustainable hack, because it's cheaper, and then you make compost.
we we are on the way to the to the garden there's a community garden where we take our kitchen waste and we drop that off every week or every two weeks and we are on our way there this morning and it's a little bit rainy and overcast but we have to do this Bicarbon vinegar is an amazing concoction. We use it together to um, clean our toilets, to clean our drains. You can even mix it into a spray bottle and use it to, to clean windows and tiles and that kind of thing. So just a, a little caveat here. One day, I'll start it with a story. One day I got home probably about two minutes before prospective buyers were supposed to come and look at the flat. And I walked in here and the place smelled like a fish and chip <laughs> shop because herself <laughs> had decided to clean the floors with vinegar and not use essential oil. So pro tip, if you're going to do that and you're going to have visitors, put in something that smells nice. A few drops of essential oil does the, does does the, the trick. trick. Yeah. Yeah. Growing your own vegetables, even just a few of them, can make a huge difference to your budget. It also means that you avoid eating pesticides if you grow your own vegetables, which is a win. If you can't buy organic. If you can't buy organic, yeah, of course. Yeah. We can't grow vegetables because our balcony isn't plant-friendly, but we sprout. Yeah. Even sprouting has helped us save a lot of money and packaging because we, we literally don't buy lettuce anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And lettuce, is, it's, a, it's a big cost. They, it it's is, expensive yeah. and lots of packaging. And sprouts are, are super, super cost effective, plus nutrient dense. You can really feel it when you eat them. Yeah, like, nutrient dense like nobody's them. business. Yeah. Hey? We now live in a world that encourages us to always buy new things. Yeah, there's even a term for it. It's called planned obsolescence. How crazy is that? So they actually, they, they manufacture products to conk out too soon, basically. Yeah, so to not last as long. Yeah, they don't make them to last. So this encourages us to, to buy new things, even if we, we really don't need them. So sometimes you don't have a choice. If, you, if you're still working, or, or even if you're not working, and you have a laptop or a, a smartphone, you, you have to replace that you know, in good time. Because now, now you know, apps and software, when they update, if your device is too old, then you know, yeah. it won't update. And it doesn't matter if you've looked after it um, and it still looks new. The software is old, so you, you have to update. But there's a lot of things where that doesn't apply, like clothes, for instance. Yeah. I've got a, a great story of a, of a piece of clothing that I've had for probably 15 years now. It's my, my Luma Orange running jacket. I bought it when we first started running, and it's still as good as new. Yeah. And I mean, recently, I, I had a pair of jeans that was only about a year old, and they started giving at the pockets, and before, in a different mindset, I might have just gone out and bought new jeans, yeah. but I took them to the tailor and it cost me a hundred rand to fix them. And she did it with her pajama pants as well. Yeah, so the, the point is that it saves money and if you just think about it, then it's, it's saving the planet as well. Because those clothes that you, you send to um, charities and things very often don't get used. Okay. Yeah, they end up, that. no, often second-hand clothes end up in the landfill. 
Oh, wow. Mm. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Buying less and choosing quality over quantity allows you to be frugal and sustainable. Two carrots, one knife, or win-win, as we like to say. Yes. So avoid those impulse buys. Think, think about the, the process, how the, how the product got to you and what you're going to do with it, and see if it's worth buying. Exactly. The mo one of the most important reasons for buying quality over quantity is that your fast fashion stores like H&M and, and that they, they literally make things so that they fall apart. They fall apart or after one wash or whatever. Um, and not only is the, the way that it's made, like the, the people aren't treated well, but those things end up in the landfill. So we, we really shouldn't be buying them. Rather spend the money and buy one expensive thing from a reputable retailer like, um, what are they called? Uh, Patagonia, for one, one example of many. There you have it. Seven eco-friendly frugal living tips that we use in our daily lives. Let us know in the comments which one you're most excited to try or if you've got any other frugal, sustainable hacks uh, for, for the community to share with them. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll see you again in the next video for more simple living escapades. escapades. Bye. Bye. Things. We are all about two carrots. Now I'm going to say it properly. So we are all about cutting two carrots, one knife, with one knife approach in our house. Let's face it. <laughs> okay, I can. I can. And you might. You can I, definitely I will, do I it. I will. And I will. So we have got seven tips for you. Today I'm going to be grown up. <laughs> Just so you guys know, we are one minute into shooting. I'm grown up. One minute and the bloopers have started. It's because you made It's always because I, because I. She now makes, we She makes us do jumping jacks. There's a reason for it. This, this, to get bloopers. Huh. All you have to say is we've got seven tips. <laughs> we'll be back. Welcome to Mostly Mindful. We, we... <laughs> okay. Wait, I can do it. <laughs> can do it. I know you can. Make it up, whatever you want to say. Welcome to Mostly Mindful, where we do what? <clears throat> where we have fun, drink eat coffee, snacks, <laughs> eat sweets, <laughs> and play with our cat. For locally sourced, <laughs> organic, <laughs> seasonal carrots. And you can cut the, the greens off and, and eat those too. More fresh fruit, more fresh fruit and vegetables produce. more fresh produce sometimes you don't have a choice you know if you if you're still working and um you you need a lap phone, a lap phone. <laughs> i've always wanted a lap phone <laughs> it's a bit like a phablet. <laughs>